So the first thing I'm going to tell you about is Nuku Content, which is our uh, multilingual extension for Joomla. Uh, it's simply an extension. You install it into your Joomla site, and then you have uh, multilingual features. So why did we make it? We think we, can, we could do it uh, in a way that is a lot easier to make it uh, very self-evident for people to use uh, multilingual. And it doesn't matter how many languages you need. It doesn't matter uh, what kind of site you are building. Uh, it's very easy to do with Nuku content. The three most important things that we have, uh, oh, let me mention this first. Uh, at the moment, we are at uh, version 0.6.6. .6. It's a GPL license, but it's commercial, so you cannot download it for free at the moment. And it works with uh, Joomla 1.5. Three most important things that we want to do first and foremost is uh, make it easy to keep an overview of what is happening in your site. Uh, translating content is just part of it. Uh, if you have a compl complex site, you will probably pay uh, translators to make the translations for you. So you need to be able to see uh, what is already translated, what is still missing, and even if for example, an author comes back and changes the original content to uh, keep track of which items, which translations are now outdated so that translator can come in and fix those outdated translations and, and make them up to date again. So with Nuku content, it's very easy to keep track of that progress and of all those changes that are happening in the whole system. The second thing is that we want to make it easy to configure it and to set it up. If you look at a lot of uh, Joomla extensions today, you see they have pages and pages and pages of configuration. And each configuration option, you basically need to read a whole page of documentation to understand what it does and what the effect of that option is on your site. And we all know if you ever wrote something, uh, nobody reads documentation. So you have a whole bunch of users who use your product, who have all these options, and who don't understand how to use them and how they affect their site. So we thought we can do this different. And we realized that uh, the entity that knows most about your system is your system itself. So if you have an extension or an application, and you let that extension analyze the system and how, it, how it's set up and, and all the parameters and what you are trying to do with it, and just figure out that configuration by itself, then you have something that doesn't need any configuration at all. So if you use Nuku content, you don't have to do, go through all the configuration screens. You just say, I want these languages. I want to translate these components. You don't have to install any separate configuration XML files or anything. It just works. So Nuku makes, Nuku makes the decisions for you. We think that's a lot easier to, to set up a site this way. Third most important thing for us is that uh, translations, ultimately it's about uh, optimizing your site, not just for search engines, it's actually optimizing your site for different languages of search engines. For example, many people who are uh, English speaking don't realize this, but uh, there's not just google.com, there's also google.de for Germany, google.fr for France, and uh, there's, there's probably about uh, 30 of those. And each of these Google, uh, localized Google sites, they will prefer si uh, uh, sites that are in that language. So you don't just optimize for English, you optimize for each language separately. So with Nuku Content, we made sure that every aspect of your site is fully translatable. Not just the content itself, but also the navigation, all the modules, and even the URIs. So, uh, if you have a URI in your site, and it's, for example, en slash uh, hello, the English page, then if you switch that page to uh, uh, French, you will have slash fr slash bonjour. It just happens automatically, and you don't have to think about it. The system just does that for you. So, and Google likes that because the URIs are in French, the metadata is in French, the content is in French, everything is translated, so for Google, that's, that's, that's perfect. 
I have a couple of screenshots. This is the dashboard in the back end where uh, you can basically see everything that is happening in your system. Uh, the latest new additions to the site, uh, the latest translated items, the latest changes, the latest uh, deleted items. And this is for all the content, not just articles, but for every uh, component that you have in your site. Uh, on the other side, uh, you see the progress for each language. Um, I think we have some more. Just here, for example, uh, the first language is English. The screenshot is not very clear. But uh, the blue uh, items is the total amount of items in that language. The green ones are the uh, completed items. The red ones are the missing items. And the yellow ones are the ones that uh, are outdated. So if you had content and the original content was changed, then your item is outdated. And this is basically the same thing, but in a list. So all the content is here. You can go from here and edit that content or translate that content. And you see the same colors. It's a bit fake, but the same colors uh, in the middle there that indicate uh, the status of each content item. And uh, what you can see here, it's also not that easy to see on the screenshot, but we are still in the same uh, uh, user interface of the article manager. The only difference is that we added the one uh, language selector on the top. So if you want to translate an article, you just go to normal article manager, you switch the language, and you start translating. There's no separate user interface for the translating. It's just all happens in the component's own user interface. Here you see some more uh, uh, statistics. This is uh, the activity for each translator. So if your translator hasn't been doing his work, you can see, you can follow the amount of things he does. And if he says, hey, I did uh, 20 translations, and you check, and he only did one, then you don't have to pay him. Um, I'm going to go into deep. So in adding languages is just you know adding the name of the language and, and the uh, shortcut to the ISO code, and you're done. So I'll uh, give the word to my handicapped friend here. I like it when they call me handicapped and you can do stuff like that. <laughs> and nobody cares, right? Um, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, you have one left. Um, so, Matthias gave a little bit of an introduction of Nuku Content. For the people that don't know yet, Nuku Content is a multilingual solution for Joomla to make your website multilingual and translate the content of your site. Who has already built a multilingual website among, among you? Okay, it, has that been easy? It was hell. What did you use? Okay. Well, Joomfish? No, we don't really know that. Uh, we, yeah. Uh, yeah? Yeah, it was easy with Nuku. Uh, well, Nuku content tries to solve the problem. It, it is not perfect. The, the biggest problem with translating Joomla extensions with solutions like Joomfish and Nuku content is that you're actually working a little bit around the problem. Uh, multilingual is what I consider a core CMS feature. It should be in the core of the system and it should not be something that you add on later to then go figure out how to do that and make it compatible with extensions. So while we are quite good at solving the problem and not needing to install plugins, bigger extensions still are a challenge. Big extensions like Flexi Content K2 and others, they do things a little bit different in some cases to solve problems that they need to solve, but making those multilingual is not always quite easy. Um, while we were developing Nuku content, as we are good developers, uh, we tried to keep our code dry. You know what that means? Who is actually a developer in the room? Who writes PHP code? A little bit. OK, so you actually know dry means don't repeat yourself, right? which is what every good developer should do. You write it once, and then you use it everywhere. So we were figuring out that certain bits and pieces of Nuku content were basically reusable, and we started to using them for client projects and for other people. And we put them into what later became the Nuku framework, um, which is tools for developers. What I really want to show you here is based on Nuku content, which is just an example. Later in this talk, we're going to present you with seven 
different extensions and solutions that have been built on top of this framework. You know, content is just a first. But we're actually going to let the developers in there sitting here in front of you um, and over there show you what they are building so you have a good idea what the power of this framework is. Um, it's rapid extension development for Joomla. What does that mean? We want to make it easy for you to build extensions uh, and do that with less time. You need less time with less code, with more power and more flexibility. You can go to the next one. Um, we call it a new brain for Joomla. A lot of people ask, well, what does that mean? Are you building on top of Joomla? Are you building something completely new? Well, it's a little bit like putting a new brain in Joomla, putting two engines in the same car and then switching the engine depending on which road you are on. You know those four-wheel drives? You can put them in four-wheel and you put it, can put them in two-wheel drive? Well, this is the four-wheel option where you get power on four wheels or on all the four wheels and not only on two, right? Put it in and it will run a lot smoother. It will be more powerful and if the, the, the slope goes up, it will be able to put you on top of it. That's a little bit how, how you can best picture it. Uh, next one. So uh, this is now version 0 0.7 alpha. People that are coming to the workshop tomorrow that will be working with this version. Um, it is GPL licensed. Like everything we do, it is GPL. And it is non-commercial, meaning you can just get it. It's Joomla 1.5 only. We are testing with 1.6, and we are actually quite good at running our extension on 1.6 already. There are a few smaller issues. But mainly an extension built on Nuka Framework runs in 1.5, and it runs in 1.6, and you don't need to make any code changes to do that, which is a plus, because you need to build it once for a client. If your client switches to 1.6, you just switch your extension with him. 30,000 lines of code, and at the moment, 2,000 commits, a little bit over 2,000 commits, we have already done on the framework. The framework has been in development. Officially, when we started doing the framework, it was October, no, February 2000, February 2008. Next one? Oh yeah, M1.6, well nice, thank you. Write less code. If you're developing a Joomla extension, then what you do is you take one that exists, right? Who has done that already? Who has developed his own Joomla extension? Well, there you go. But you didn't take one that existed probably, you started your own. You did? What did you use to start with? The com content. Poor you. I feel for you. <laughs> so you took com content and then you went, how do we make com content into flexi content? You started copy pasting code and then making changes. That is great, but it takes you a lot of time. You spend a lot of time figuring out what does what and, and copy pasting that code over. Um, if you have clients and you probably recognize the problem, your client needs, for example, an events management solution. And then you go to the Uber Super Jet, the king of all repositories where you can find your extensions, and you go and you look for your events management extension. And you find, let's say, 10. You eliminate, let's say, seven, and you have three left. Then you go to your client and you tell your client, I have three beautiful events management extensions right here. Let's test them. And then the client goes, well, this is probably the one that comes closest to what I need, so let's go with that one. You implement it. Everything goes fine until you come up at the end of your project. Budget is almost run dry. Hours are almost run dry. You're sick of the client. You want to go do something else. And then he comes with, but that events management extension, and I see you smiling because you recognize it. That events management extension, great stuff. I need this changed here over there. Can you add to it this and that and that? And then you go like, hmm. Well, hmm, not really. Especially people that do virtual mart integrations know this problem. So we want to build something, a framework that allows you to extend the extension, make it more flexible, and then you simply say to your client, no problem. It takes me another hour or two, and you have what you need. Main feature here is we want you to write less code. We want to, have, we want to create extensions that are have less code in them, but are a lot more powerful. Example, this is Ninja board, which will be demonstrated by Stian later on, uh, that they wrote originally on the Joomla 1.5 framework. You see the code on the left. What we see here is 30,000 lines of code, 10,000 lines of comments. Well commented, by the way, Stian. It's very well done. Um, 
He is rewriting it on the Nuku framework, and you are at the moment at which version? One point zero beta. They rewrote it on top of the Nuku framework, and of those thirty thousand lines of code, there are three thousand five hundred left. That's it. And you have a fully functional forum uh, extension, and he even added features to it. That's it approximately 80% decrease in code size. This is one of the main reasons why the framework is so powerful. You simply write less code. allows you to focus on what your clients need and not on what you need to make the stuff for your clients work. Extreme flexibility. I already talked about this. This is great, right? We have 14 CCKs in Joomla. That's great. I congratulated Sebastian. I forgot the Jason Bold guys, which are not already in the room. No, I forgot you guys. Well, I mention you now. Uh, K22. We have a bunch of these CCK-like extensions. They all try to solve the same problem. Almost. One adds a little bit of extra searchability. One does it a little bit different, but basically they all do the same. That is not so great because they're all replicating the same code base. It's basically 14 times the same problem. And if you go to your extensions directory, you find there is, in most cases, almost 4,000 times the same problem being solved. There are 14 CCKs. There are how many document managers? There are so many event list managers. They're all trying to do the same, a little bit different. That's great. But it would be better if they would all work on a basic same framework structure that they can extend. Imagine that this code base here, well, 5,000 right now. How many lines of code in a normal Joomla extension? Let's say 20,000? No, let's say 5,000 lines of code in a decent component. Yeah? So you multiply 5,000 by 5,000. Well, there are less components. There are also modules in here, but you still get the idea. That's a, an enormous amount of code. Reduce that by 80%. That's 80% less bugs, that's 80% less maintenance, that's 80% less shit, that's 80% less problems. And probably 400% more power. That would be great if we could achieve that. Next one, please. And finally, security. Joomla is plagued by security issues. Joomla is listed by IBM. What you see here is the X-Force index. Xforce is an index released by IBM that lists open source vendors or vendors in general and then gives a percentage uh, uh, indication about the disclosures in relation, be careful here, in relation to the size of their code base, meaning how much of their code is there distributed, how much of, the, of this code of this vendor is there in the wild, installed on your laptop, installed on your server. Of course, we see the big ones, Apple, Sun, Microsoft, Oracle, are listed in the first quarter of 2009 in the top five. And then six, you see Drupal, seven, you see Mozilla, nine, you see Linux, and 10, you see Joomla. For 2008, Joomla even ended up in the top four in the great presence of the uber gods, uh, Microsoft, Apple, and Sun. Now, it's great to be on this list, but I don't really want to be there, means that it means two things. We are doing one thing right. We have an enormous amount of websites out there. Two and a half percent of the internet, I said uh, this after. 3.4. Well, I was trying to quote trees, but OK, 3.4. Of the internet, w w it's just Joomla. That's 3.4, which is a lot of code, which is why we end up this high in these rankings. If we could succeed, and then you can continue, if we could succeed in getting that code, that overall code footprint down, we will go down in these X-Force rankings too. Um, and OSM says, well, these rankings are not necessarily our fault. This is not the fault of the Joomla project because, because the high rank is due to the third-party applications that are developed for Joomla, which is what most of us are doing, are developing extensions for Joomla. And there is truth in that. Uh, it is not Joomla that is insecure. Joomla is very secure, but there are a lot of vulnerabilities found in third-party extensions. 
Well, we say that it's true, but it's still our responsibility as a community to solve that. You cannot simply blame it on the third party extension developers and then close your eyes for this problem. There could be solutions, and we believe that solutions lie in, either, in one, reducing the code uh, footprint, and two, creating a framework or a base architecture that deals with security out of the box. Extension developers are not necessarily security experts, and they shouldn't be. The framework should do that for them, and if the framework fails, the framework needs to be fixed, not every extension. So, now, 14 CCKs, they all solve certain problems and allow you to implement business solutions. What we have found is that while we like them, they are just not getting there where we need to be. We have clients that have very interesting complex business problems that CCKs don't necessarily solve. A CCK is very good at allowing you to create a content type. You can put some data in, and it provides you with versioning, with a little bit of workflow. But what clients also are very interested in is they want it to work their way. They want to see a user interface that fits their needs. They want to be able to change that user interface. As I'm working with Flexi content, and I'm going to be a little bit critical here, but no offense, is that I'm still working in Flexi content in the back end. If I do this with K2, it's still K2. And there is a certain amount of flexibility that I have, but it's, not, it's, it's limited. For example, we need to, like I said this morning, we use Joomla to implement solutions for our clients and we add things to it. But if you look at what Joomla actually is, it is, it is today a CMS or it's mostly used as a CMS. What is a CMS? Well, it manages articles and articles Around those articles, you always have approximately the same things you need. You have permissions, versioning, taxonomy, trash management, workflow comments, which is what Flexi Content K2 are also doing. The problem is I cannot lift them out. I cannot say I only need taxonomy and comments and versioning, and all the rest I don't care about. I need to take it in the box that it comes. Our clients don't really like that, but in some, in some cases my client needs or workflow and a versioning system and articles could be something completely different. For example, we could be building a DMS, a document management system, which is totally not article focused. It is document focused. In that case, I still have permissions. I still have versioning. I still have trash management. I still have taxonomy. I still have workflows. I still have comments, but I have documents and those are feature, uh, our focus around files. And my client might want a completely different user interface very specific to how his organization works. And I'm not even talking about the front end of the website, I'm mostly basically talking about the back end. Maybe this is even an internet solution. There is even no front end. And they have very interesting business problems that are very, very hard to solve with the CCKs we have today. Another example of that could be a project management solution. I wanna manage my client's projects. Uh, I have feedback coming in, I have tickets, uh, I have a, a few discussions. Discussions are basically comments, but presented in a different way. I still have trash management, I still have versioning, I still have permissions, and I still have workflows. Very specific to how my project management solution will work. Again, this is very hard to do with a CCK. So what we're trying to do, and this is what I'm trying to get to, and you can show the next one, is create a CCK for developers, or you could also call it a content management framework, without the user interface that the CCK like Flexi provides. We don't need that. We are developers. We don't care about that user interface. We care about creating the user interface for the client. We are, creating, we are caring about building the business logic for the client, but not the user interface. We don't need a user interface to click a setting here and a setting there and something else here and then put in a content type to make something work. We do that on the level that we are best in, which is SQL, PHP, JavaScript, CSS. We work with the technologies that we have learned to work with. So Nuku Framework is basically trying to solve some of the same problems that CCKs are doing, but on a lower level. We are trying to do that in a way that it becomes possible for even for you as a novice developer to use this. And this is what the workshop, 
the workshop move to the left <laughs> okay uh, even even if you're an office developer, you should be able to work with this am i am I in the way of the camera okay to that one you want me here thank you because otherwise I'm in the way of these guys, so maybe I'll move here uh, okay. So Nuka Framework is basically what we could call a CCK or a Combat Management Framework for developers. Now, can we go next? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, what we want to introduce you a little bit is that for Nuku, it's not only about solving these problems, it's also about we're trying to create a community around that. Uh, meaning we have built a framework, we want to share that framework with other people so that you can extend upon it, build upon it, and also learn from it and engage with a community of contributors. And that is what Matthias will in introduce a little bit so you know where to find those resources. We're actually very lucky to have a community already this soon in the project. It's just people like you who, who are interested and in start playing with the framework and start using it for a project and then you know what happens, they find some issue and they send in a patch, they scratch their own itch and we lure them in and we take them in the, in the mailing list and the chat and they start you know, being interested and, and building their own stuff. So uh, two months ago, one month ago we announced the Nuku developer portal. We basically needed a place for all these people to, to collaborate and, and to put their stuff that they are working on. Uh, so we released uh, code.nuku.org. It's basically the place where you can find anything. You can uh, you have the repositories, uh, the SVN repositories with the framework itself. Um, I'll get to that in a moment. And uh, what's this? Oh yeah, we have some screenshots here. Cool. So this is this is what it looks like. Um, these are the two uh, uh, milestones: the 0.7 milestone, which is almost finished, and then. Uh, the tickets for the next milestone are in the 0.8. Here you see some of the activity, so we can keep track of all the activity that anyone, well, this page, I, I don't know who added this screenshot, but it's a little bit focused on one particular contributor. <laughs> but if you were to look at this today, uh, you would see all the people who added, uh, who committed something or, or uh, commented on tickets, all that sort of activity. Um, these are the, this is the SVN uh, repository, repository for the framework itself. If you're a develop, developer, you recognize this sort of stuff. If you're not a developer, don't bother. <laughs> and this is uh, the wiki, um, which is, uh, uh, again, a, a community edited wiki. So it's uh, the people who use Nuku who can add uh, articles, like if they are working on something cool and uh, solve this problem in this particular way. I just write something about it, put it in the wiki for others to find. Uh, it's very nice. And this is the front page, uh, but I'll show you. Uh, this is where I was getting at. So this is the, we have several spaces on code.nuku.org. Uh, Nuku framework is of course the most important one, it's the actual framework and, and the wiki I just told you about. But we have some other spaces as well. We have one called Nuku examples, and that's where uh, anybody in the, co in the community who's interested in doing that, can write little example uh, components, a uh, little bit of code snippets, and just put it in there for others to see and, and to collaborate on. And uh, I think Christian, if he's here, will... Uh, uh, Tur Turkil is going to do uh, that talk. Uh, but Christian, who is one of the co-organizers, he's probably too busy or too tired, something like that. Uh, he's been working very hard on an example component. Uh, and some other people have contributed to that as well. So that is all in the example space. A very good place to start learning and see uh, how you use Nuku framework in the wild. And then we have Nuku components. And Nuku components are in fact uh, small components that have uh, something that is reusable to other components. Uh, so if you remember the, the slides a little bit earlier with the uh, CMS, uh, DMS and PMS, all those things that you saw around that, like versioning and uh, uh, trash management and comments, those can all go into those Nuku components. Because if I write uh, an extension today and I want to have version management in my extension, I don't have to write it myself. I simply tell my extension, use this conversions extension, 
and then everything will happen automatically. Maybe some configuration, but my extension will automatically have versioning because it's already in that reusable component. Same thing with trash management. A lot of components need that, so you just link in the, uh, the one from the component space uh, and all the other things that, that you saw, comments. We don't have comments yet, but you know, we, we or someone in the uh, community will probably make that someday. It's just in there, you can reuse it, and you save a lot of time. Uh, and this is, for example, profiles. User profiles is also something that many people need. This is the first one in the Nuku components uh, space. So just a couple of uh, screenshots. For the people who have been following this for a long time, uh, this is actually the beer component, if you remember. Brian Tiemann had uh, developer contests uh, last summer, and this is the project that won, and it has evolved into uh, Comprofile. So now it's reusable for different uh, extensions. And there's actually another one in here. So Profiles uses the taxonomy uh, component, Comterms, which again is something that you can reuse, because a lot of components need tagging, uh, or categorization, you don't have to write any of that anymore. You just link in the comterms uh, component and you have tagging in your extension. And this is another uh, screenshot of the installer. I don't know what the status of that is at the moment. Stian, you have been working on this recently? It's just to install and uh, manage the framework. So it's a built-in update. You can see the update framework button there. So that's all it does, basically. So, but again, this, if you want to create a redistributable uh, extension, then you don't have to write an installer for the framework or an updater for the framework. This is all handled by this. Or even for your own extension, but I don't know what the, how, how far we are with that. OK, cool. See, there's so much happening, even I don't know sometimes. Uh, the next space I want to talk to you about that is on uh, code.nuku.org is uh, developer tools. Um, there's not much in there yet, but we al already discovered that uh, people need like this small uh, stuff to help them during development. For example, uh, packaging is something typical. We have a, a Fing script. Fing is a, a PHP project that helps you to package and deploy your software. Uh, it's uh, very similar to uh, GNU Make, if you know that. Um, but it's written in PHP, so it's a lot more interesting for us because we're all PHP developers, of course. And so in Nuku Tools, we have uh, Fing scripts that help you to build the package of your extension so you can give that to your users or your customers uh, to install it. So you don't have to collect the files yourself and zip it and make sure it all works. You just automate it, use it using, uh, using Fing. And we have some other tools in there as well, like uh, making sure that if you to check out from SVN, to simlink it in, into your Joomla install, and these kind of small, uh, useful tools for, for developers. Um, so I'll leave the rest to, to Johan. Um, but all I'm trying to say is that we, we, we have these people who are, are, are starting to contribute to Nuku Framework, and uh, we, since uh, a month we have this developer portal where we can uh, combine all those collaborations and help you to have a place to actually do that. Uh, which is pretty cool, we think. I'm not sure what you think about it, but we are kind of proud of our developer portal. Uh, it took a month or two in the building. Where's Tom? Is he here? No, he's guarding the stand outside. Oh, you're there, which is mostly what Tom has been working on. We're using Assembla, by the way, for this portal, which is also very interesting for you if you built your own open source or your own projects, either closed or open. Uh, it's also a great way, for example, to manage client projects. It doesn't always need to contain code. It can also simply do project management in different ways. It is a very configurable uh, something. I'm going to talk about that actually tomorrow during the Young Conference when I talk about building developer communities uh, during the Young Conference tomorrow. Now, um, the framework is intended to solve a bunch of problems in a very reusable way. Uh, we are not extension developers. Well, with Nuku Content we are, but we are framework developers. We work on a lower level. We want to develop extensions that can be reused, and these are some of the challenges um, that we're trying to solve. Many of the challenges you will recognize, for example, um, the e-commerce challenge in Joomla. 
e-commerce is something that has been widely discussed. There are e-commerce solutions in Joomla. There is no framework level e-commerce solution that allows you to build upon. There are no real connectors to payment processing gateways. It's something that you just can take, plug in, and then build your user interface on top of that. It's a challenge we're trying to solve. We're actually working on a PayPal solution at the moment for our own shop that will be open sourced later this year that just does that. It is a reusable component that just does PayPal IPN transactions and that you can plug in and then put a workflow on top and use it in the way you want to use it in your website. Same thing here is versioning and that is actually something that Turkle will show. Yes, right? Yes, you will. How can I solve the versioning problem not just for one component but for any component that I build? and plug it into my component with just two lines of code. W then you have, for example, import-export. I was talking about that this morning already a little bit. The web is more than inputting content in websites. With CCKs, we have, been very good, have become very good at doing that, right? Which is basically a form. You put some information in it, and you save it in the database. And then you basically have one big silo of information that goes nowhere unless you move that whole database somewhere else. What if I want to get some piece of information out a website and move into another? What if I want to push information into that website from a desktop application? Those are all challenges we haven't even began to discover how to solve them. And then you look at technologies like REST, for example, uh, to make that happen. The framework, and we will demonstrate that tomorrow, is restable out of the box if you don't know, or restful out of the box. If you don't know what that means, no problem. If you do know a little bit what it means, it basically means that you can connect websites together. You can move content from one website to another, or you can move content from your desktop application to a website, and vice versa. Um, other challenges, multi-site. Who does big Joomla installations here in the room? Nobody. You all do small stuff. You do big stuff. I think you do too, right, Emmanuel? Big installations for clients? Yes. We have a quite interesting challenge with multi-site. We're building a platform for the Belgian police, Belgian government, they have 200 Joomla sites running on a server that they maintain until now themselves. Those 200 sites are all separate installations. <laughs> you hear me coming? I need to update 200 separate installations. I need to keep them secure, maintained, and I need to support approximately 500 administrators, all with different browsers, and all uh, with different problems. My first, uh, my first concern is getting those guys on one code base and then approximately 200 separate databases with an environment that allows me to support them and update them properly. I need multi-site, uh, which is another challenge that we're trying to solve. How can we make a framework that allows you to create multi-site solutions out of the box? Um, a few other things that are on here, for example, are RDF, HTML5, CSS3, are all new technologies that are coming that are very, very interesting to dive into and see what the potential is. Uh, especially HTML5 and CSS3 will allow you to make your site a lot more performant. Less images, but more beautiful user interfaces. And then, do we have something more? No? Oh, yeah, of course. Yes, you go ahead. Well, I'll finish up. Um, so, if you are an integrator, and who is actually, and I'll stand here, right? <laughs> who is an integrator? Who integrates websites for people? Some of you. Integrator means you work on projects, you take Joomla, you add some extension on top of it, you build some custom, uh, uh, some custom code for it, and then you deliver a project to your client. That's what I consider an integrator. Who does that? Most of you. Right? That is especially, you are especially what we're trying, what we are building these things for. There are far more integrators than there are extension developers. Uh, I'm sitting together with Emmanuel, hopefully in two weeks, to discuss if there is interest in him in using, in using a Nuku framework. But the framework is already ready for you to use and build solutions for clients on top of. Uh, and those can be small or even bigger things. So if that interests you, you can come tomorrow to our Nuku development workshop, where we're actually going to show you in three hours how to build a complete extension. With, all, with a lot of these things that we have demonstrated, we claim to be able to do out of the box. And then you will actually be seeing how that actually all works. And then I'll give the word to Matthias, who will introduce our contributors. Yes. Go ahead. 
So uh, up till now, we've, we've been to a lot of events to talk about uh, Nuku Framework. But uh, most of the time, it was just Johan and me uh, telling him, it's great, use it, it's great. But this time, we were very lucky with this international event. A lot of the people who actually have started using it in the past two years uh, are here and, and uh, are going to show us what they have been building. Uh, some of them are extensions that will be that are or will be available uh, on the JET and that you can use. Some of these are uh, custom projects for, 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 uh, you know, for clients. Um, and maybe we can start with the Bionic guys. So uh, this is Nick, the CEO of Bionic, and uh, they are a, a Nuku partner, right? And they use Anahita and they are building something on top of that. I'll get you. Okay. Hi, guys. Let's wait. Okay, I have a, I have a little a little things to demonstrate. Actually, we are using Anaita that it's also a framework we can say, and to to build a event management platform that it's social. So we because we saw and we see events as social networks mainly, and I show you how. Johan asked me to to talk about what we are doing, but I start talking about you today. So he, he asked it, uh, today if you guys have made a friend here at the job. And we all agree that at least all of us have made one friend. OK? So you, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Here is your new friend at the job, and this, here is me. It's okay, it's okay, you can leave it. You can leave it. Here is me, and I'm not a friend of you all. I have also some new friend, me too, but not all of you. Okay, sorry, sorry. I have, <laughs> I, I'm not friend of all you guys, but we can meet after all. And uh, you can go, and here is my presentation. So you say, this is nothing to do with being friends, but you are actually watching it. So you are connected to my presentation that is connected to me. So probably there will be some shortcuts to get to know me. So if we extend this by thinking of what's going on here at the job, like Twitter's photograph with you in, and videos and presentation and material you bring home, you, you see a cluster because of the, the social graph and mainly the, the graph theory when a node have at least one connection, then a cluster is created out of it. This is just mathematics. But then a cluster, what is this? It's the job. So it's, it's the event. This was the job. A lot of connection, a lot of things going on. And clusters also connect to other clusters, because maybe we can go on the next Joomla day, or maybe your event, no, your birthday, whatever. It's all get interconnected. So we are visioning events as mainly social networks, because we see that events are dead. And Johan, we have the demonstration today that everybody made at least one friend. And networking is the most important thing. So what a short resume, what we are doing, it's about people, events, and networking. And this is our project that it's called OANA. So we, we have put it online yesterday, an Alpha 1 version, and uh, that we are proud of it. But I'm not going to talk about it anymore, because you don't say, hey, guys, it's OK to talk about what you are doing, but it's better to see what and where you want to go in the future. So let's, let's, let's just a question. Think distributed. Think what, what I've just shown you now about the network and think of this network, this cluster, in a distributed system. So if you guys are interested to bring the, the chat over and see a demo of what we are doing, we have some screenshot if, if they want to see it. But if the add is, you can go on the add. next one, the next one, and the next one, and we can meet after outside. 
But if you have questions, I'll ask him the hard questions first. So um, this is built on top of Anahita, right? Yep. OK. Um, can you explain a little bit about your experiences with working with Anahita? By the way, Anahita, we will also show, no? Uh, we, we could show it later, yes. So this is, this is built on top of Anahita, which is a project that then builds on top of Nuku Framework. Yeah, I'll go over there, thanks. I'll hemp here, stay here. <laughs> okay, so this is built on Anahita. Okay. This is interview style. Um, how, does that, how, do, how does that work for you? Are you working together with these guys or? Yeah, the, we, we've, we, went, we went in touch with the Anahita guys because we did a Nuku camp at the Bunich headquarters in Switzerland. And we were trying to mainly solve the problem that the Anaita guys were doing, but they were more in an advanced level in the implementation. And so we say, well, let's, let's collaborate, let's share the knowledge and focus on what we really need. Because we were after doing some kind of events platform, but we needed a, a social platform behind. And we find the Anaita guys that were doing great. So we say, just get in touch together. And they have a nice way of saying that they say it's kind of a tribe. So, okay. Nice so, but you're not a coder. No. But I come tomorrow to to your. We are trying to get to be coder. It's. But, but, but you're not a coder, no. and and you're building yeah. that. How does that happen? Yeah, because <laughs> there are great people that need let less code, and you can put things together. And it is really powerful because of that. Because it's it's also an it is at an alpha level, but it's it's really minimalistic approach and the concept, because we did one year in really studying a lot of social graph theories and back in university again. And so for us, Anaita really represent this concept and it's fun to play with. Okay, so uh, Anahita, for the people that haven't heard about it, it is a social engine that is built on top of the Nuka framework. What is very specific about this approach and different to community build some social and other social solutions for Joomla, that it is again using this reusability approach where you have a number of secrete components that provide some functionality that you can mix and match together. What they're doing here is they're using the base Anahita engine with not that much coding experience, but with a good business knowledge and a good knowledge of what it needs to become, and they are adding the events aspect to that. Uh, working together with the Anahita team to provide them with the advanced, fun the advanced fun functionality. And that is what, what you see here, what is growing here. Uh, Something th that was nice because us not being coder, but we needed to, to build these nodes in, in the network that are events, uh, push it further the development of Anahita because they were at a, an architectural level and with a proof of concept, but they didn't yet do it, but doing with us, they, they found out issues. And so our project, it's improving again the Anaita framework, and then again, I think the Nuku framework as well. So it's like all of us together in this Nuku community are really helping each other out. Okay, thanks. I can go. <laughs> you can go. Jeremy, would you like to introduce? yourself and what you're doing. This is Jeremy Wilkin. Yeah, uh, as he said, I'm Jeremy Wilkin. I'm working with a RESTful service. And so the difference between using Joomla itself or some other kind of application is that Nuku exposes a lot of your functionality by default uh, through a RESTful interface. And if you're not familiar with what that means, here is a 10 second, hopefully, version. It'll probably be longer. But um, when you're using REST, the idea is that you focus on your resources rather than uh, on your functionality. So for example, search is some kind of a functionality. It's an algorithm, something that uh, is processed. Uh, resource oriented means that you're looking first at the piece of data. So if it's a, if it's a data about a person, you then have like, you build your, your URLs my site slash people slash Jeremy would be uh, the way that you would access information about me. Instead of doing something like mywebsite.com slash do search for Jeremy and pulling up all this information. And the way that is, uh, is because when you use REST, uh, you're kind of working with the way that the HTT protocol was designed. And instead of kind of creating your own 
uh, layers on top of it, like soap and all the other um, methods that there are. Uh, this, so this is a really innovative thing, but it's kind of using the basic tools that were set in motion 20 years ago, uh, just using them as properly as we can. So what Nuku has been able to do is with very little code, um, I don't have to write a model, a controller, and just a little bit, I think, in the view just to get uh, a, a resource created. So if I have a database that has a list of people with all their information, I can make REST calls and get that information. It's really brilliant. It takes about five minutes if you really want to set up a basic uh, piece of data to get. And then you can post, you can uh, add new content, you can update it, you can delete it. And those are the four main functions, right? The CRUD, create, rec create a record, update, um, to read it, and delete it. And that's the same four methods. So um, the, the beauty of Nuku is that it's going to eventually even transform a little bit more. Uh, it has, like I said, the RESTful interface. But at the moment, it still lacks some of the headers and the responses that are important. Um, so the idea is to avoid um, it's to use things like the 404 message in your response code. Let's say instead of uh, sending back a message in the page that says content not found, you send a 404 header uh, to the browser or to whatever the client is. So what we're doing is hopefully maybe something I do will be beneficial to the 0 0.9 release, which is really going to focus on the rest of the rest. OK, that sounds weird. but. Um, completing the RESTful interface. And so when you um, use Nuku, you're able to integrate cross websites easily using this RESTful interface. And that's really the point. Can I interrupt you? Go, go ahead, but I have a quick question. Um, what is the, what are you, the problem you're now solving? Quick example of that. The problem I'm solving is that I want to have a centralized service uh, and, and then have my clients be able to connect with that. And I didn't want to be using something like XML RPC, uh, which is just a convoluted process, for one. Um, but I wanted to also make it eventually a public thing, which like, if you want to connect with Twitter uh, and you want to have a public interface, REST is the, the most straightforward and logical way in, if you're going to follow that. So, so you're not building like a website or a user interface or something like that? At the moment, I'm not. No, I'm working only with the programmatic web, so only a clients, not a, not a person won't go in and start browsing the data. Currently, it's I block anybody who isn't requesting through the API that I'm developing, which is essentially all I would have to do then to switch it over is to add the views which will display the content. So the only difference is that I have chosen to ignore the human web at the moment, but it'll be so easy to just jump in and create a, a browsable database of people or whatever. So it would become very easy, for example, to build a desktop application, let's say, in, in Flash or in Flex or in Titanium and then connect it with the web service that you're making. Correct. It doesn't matter what platform you're starting from, but because we're all using a common set of language, which is the REST protocol or the HTT protocol, which is what browsers all use, makes complete sense. Um, so if we all connect on the same level, that data flows easily from one place to the other without any work, uh, without very little work. Uh, so it, would it be fair to say that you're freeing the data? That's probably the best way to say it. Well, let's conclude with that then. <laughs> okay. Who's the next one? Jeremy. So I'd like to introduce to you uh, Stian Dietrichsen. He's a Norwegian guy. Come up here. Come up here. He has the, the craziest strategy in the whole Joomla world. His, his method is he goes, he's, he's everywhere where there's activity, and he's very loud and very annoying, and he says stupid things until people start answering with the correct way of how to do it. And then he sucks up all that information, and he, he's like, his brain is expanding at a, a scaring rate. And he will talk to us about. <laughs> OK, so you're probably wondering what you're looking at on the screen right now. Uh, you know, after we did a huge code reduction in your board after you used Nuka Framework, you're almost running out of work. You didn't really know what to do next anymore when you had nothing that the Nuka framework does so much automatically. So the first thing we did, we wanted to make the process of, of, of transferring or mapping your uh, uh, ACL or permission groups in Joomla over to Nino board. 
The one you see on the right are the groups you make in Inia, in Inia board, and on the left is the, is, is the, um, the Joomla ones. So what you see here is actually SVG. Uh, it's using a JavaScript framework named Raphael, and we only added some Moot tools to, to make it drag and drop. So all you do is drag one point to the other, and then it does the rest. No more work than that. So uh, what you're seeing here is a beautiful template made by the youthing people. Uh, and the interesting part um, is we actually made, th there's no, there's no uh, template code going on here uh, in PHP. It's all what we call uh, chameleon. So it's actually auto skinning. There's no CSS or PHP you code yourself to get this result. It's all uh, by configuration. You just turn on the Joomla template and give it the right module class suffixes, and the rest is done by Nineboard. So that's what we call auto skinning, and here's another example by, um, by a rocket theme template, and you can see it's actually a very different style, but um, there's, no, there's no code doing it. On your end, it's all Nineboard and auto skinning. So, it's very easy to integrate on your site. And it's not just club templates. Um, it's working with any template because it's using uh, module Chrome. And every single Joomla template have module Chrome. So, so you, that's why it works so well and without those guys doing anything. So I'll, I'll just, because if it was a little bit confusing, what, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. So what you do, you install Ninja Board, which is a forum, which you forgot to mention, my friend. Sorry. It's the best forum there is uh, for, for Joomla. So you install the forum, and you want it to look like your site, like the rest of your site. With other forums, you have to do a lot of uh, designing or, or adapting to make the forum look like the rest of your site. With this Ninja Board, the chameleon feature, uh, it simply takes the design of the site it is in, and uh, uses that. So your forum automatically looks exactly like the rest of your site. And it doesn't matter if you bought a template from a template club or made your own, the forum copies the layout. Is that correct? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I like to do this stuff. This is like me not talking but asking questions. So at the beginning, you were saying that you were not knowing what to do anymore because Nuku Framework already did so much, right? Yeah. And then you started doing all these kind of crazy wild ideas. Yeah. How did that happen? Um, you know, when, when you run out of stuff to do all this boring stuff, like coding models over and over again and repeating yourself, you get a lot of time in your hands. And when you get time, you, get, you can start doing all this crazy stuff you would never have the time to do before. Like um, the chameleon feature actually took us two months to get stable. But uh, since Nuku Framework allowed us to do all of these bug fixes and uh, all the models and that out of the box almost, um, we had that time available to do that. So, so uh, Daniel, which is, by the way, uh, the, guy, the, the main CEO of NinjaBoard and, and NinjaForge, he is now paying you to do stuff you actually just come up with and basically say, this is cool, let's do this? Yeah, basically. Well, that's pretty cool, right? You just yeah. basically tell them, let's, let's develop this this way, and then you can just go ahead and do it. And you get paid to do that? Yeah, I do. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> I rest, I can't believe rest. You can go and sit. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, sure. What's next, Matthias? This is uh, Turkil um, from Norway as well. And we have a lot of Norwegian people. Uh, where is it? The uh, harbor? The other guys didn't present themselves, so I feel a bit like I, I'm promoting too much. Okay, but um, first of all, uh, I'm going to... Uh, uh, no, you do it. I like commanding you around. First of all, I'm going to show a few screenshots of a component that is built using the Nuku framework. It's called uh, Harbor. And it's uh, sort of like an, an uh, advanced hello world component. Uh, you can open the uh, source code and see what's going, in, going on underneath. Uh, it's written by a friend of ours called uh, Christian. And he's also working here at this uh, event now. He's preparing the Oscars for later on, J Oscars. 
so he couldn't do this. So I was asked to do it in the, just a few minutes ago. So, uh, but I have some screenshots I can show you really quickly. Just go through them and I'll chat along. Okay, that was a bit fast. <laughs> yes. Uh, and next please is the yeah Christian prepared a template and everything, um, but you can of course use it without his uh, Hawaiian template. Um, just move along. Is there? It's a basic component. It has a uh, boats index. It has uh, harbors and uh, boats kind of like belong to harbors. They uh, they hail out of a harbor. And you have boat types. You have cruise ships and steamliners and long ships like the good old Vikings had it. A thousand years ago, we rocked your boats. Um, this is the dictionary index. Yes, uh, alphabetic list of, uh, uh, is it boats or harbors? It's boats. Yes, I'm really, really, I have problems with my eyes, for real. I just got the wrong colors. I've got problems with colors as well. <laughs> yeah, continue, please. Whoops. And um, yeah, you can uh, filter the boats uh, with letters on top. It's just uh, an example component. So Christian is just demonstrating what you can do really easily. So you can just open his views and look at the code. And here we have a boat, the Indian Empress. Yes, that's just the boat view with uh, details about the boat. And uh, the help pop up there is uh, for the harbor itself. So you can click on the harbor from the boat and just Continue in, and here we are looking at the ports, different ports, same concept really, it's just a view with lots of ports. And Antwerp, is that right? Close, yes, yeah, so this is the back end, it's a dashboard uh, where you can access the most commonly used com uh, functions, etc. cetera. Um, the boats view, uh, the ports view, and both types, etc. So the really interesting thing that's uh, going on here is uh, is what's happening underneath. I'm not showing you any code, really. I could show you code. I could. Uh, no, please don't. Or please do. <laughs> yeah, he has the the code here. Uh, what's really interesting and in what uh, why Christian started using Nuka framework and why I, uh, the reason why I did it myself and. Uh, the reason why we later on decided to become Nuku partners to use Nuku content that was uh, demonstrated earlier is that because you can chop your development time by 80% and you can spend your time doing the cool stuff. You can spend your time making more stuff, uh, serving uh, more clients, doing bigger projects, etc. So we said 2,000 lines of code. Does that mean anything to you? Yeah? OK. Uh, I, I don't count the code. What counts is, does it, does it work? It works. Yeah, but it's, it's impressive somehow. <laughs> I'm not a counter. Thanks. Uh, are you continuing after this? No? Yes, you are. So uh, to I won't ask hard questions to you because you didn't write it, <laughs> Christian did. Uh, Christian is a prime example of somebody that is not a very experienced coder. Christian came into our community and said, I want to help. Uh, and he said, well, there's a little bit of a Hello World component, which we called Com Harbor, which was very, very, very simple. And he said, well, I want to do something with that and make it better. And what you see here is the result. And he has been doing that over the last four weeks, five weeks, something like that. Uh, being on our Skype chat, being on our mailing list, and just coding away. And the result that he did with the template and, and all the uh, CSS and all that stuff is, is quite, quite, quite impressive. Um, what allowed him to do this is there are only 2,000 lines of code in this extension. And it shows, basically, what you see here could be done with something like Flexi. Uh, could be done with something like K2. Uh, but a non-experienced, a not-so-experienced developer can easily get the same result just using the framework. And this is what we mean with the framework is a CCK for developers. And then the next one is, aha, now I'm going to ask hard questions. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll just not reply. <laughs> the silent treatment. Yes, 
uh, please go back. Yes, this is really short, and I'm going to show you a bit of code as well. Um, we have seen, for those of you who have attended like uh, Flexi content, uh, Emmanuel showed off uh, some um, revisions sort of functionality. Uh, if, you, if you're editing an item, whatever item, whatever content it is you're working with, and you save it, and you edit it over again, and you save it, you might want to, go, want to uh, be able to go back to the first version of what you were writing. There you are. Nice presentation, by the way. And um, uh, what we, uh, what I wanted to do originally, and what I was probably lured into doing, was uh, um, because that the framework um, really gives you the opportunity to tap into whatever is happening with the database. Uh, you can do custom actions whenever something is saved, wearing whatever, whenever something is deleted or edited. And this allows you to um, tap into the actions that are happening to, uh, into uh, any kind of database table in any kind of Nuku framework powered component. So what I did was I took Christian's work, he's still not here, sorry, and his, uh, the harbor component that you just saw, and I made it um, uh, revisable. So whenever you edit a boat, you try to delete the Kontiki, famous raft by Thor Herdal, the Norwegian boat, yes. Then Mr. Johnson will go back into the component and revert your changes. Yes, please. So what I did, this, if you can read code, yes, it's big enough. This is the table class of the boat's part of the component, basically. So in the initialized, initialized function, we are adding a row of behaviors. And the only thing I did was to add the last word, revisable. And once you've done that, data will start accumulating into the database. So uh, the next thing you need will be a user interface to display those versions. And yes, please. To display those versions, we have here the boat uh, HTML view. This is where, uh, this is the class that's used whenever you're opening the uh, edit form when you're editing a boat, a, a boat. So you need the data, and I'm, I have fetched the data already, it seems. I have the revisions variable down here, and I am loading a template from the admin part of the com versions component. Is the default template of the revisions view. So what I'm basically doing from Christian's component is that I'm loading a template from my versions component and displaying his revisions. So now I have loaded the data. It's available in the revisions table variable. You can see all the way to the left. And next thing to do is just display it. That's it. It's uh, three lines, basically. Yeah, and uh, this is when I'm editing a boat. This is the, uh, is it a Norwegian boat? Yes. It's the, it's the Bergestal, large boat. So uh, here we're editing the boat, just added the boat, and we hit save, and we edit it again. Please forward. And the revisions will appear downstairs, or wherever you would like them to appear. If you would like to, the revisions to look like something else in your component, you would like Emmanuel, like to have them on the right side, of course. Go ahead. It's just a template. You can make your own template and make it look like whatever you want it to look like. And yeah, you can show more of the data as well. I'm just showing down here the revisions in a descending order. And the date when the revision was done. You can see I did this while, um, while Matthias was talking. <laughs> and yes, the administrator did those revisions. Uh, so far, uh, I'm not rolling back to any older revisions. There is no interface for doing that. And he lowered his hand. So that's, that's the basics. And um, I have counted the lines of code. No, Stian did. And it's, uh, the functionality itself, it's um, uh, 140 lines of code. The rest is just framework.
is it possible to implement reverting? Yes, that's this, uh, that's that's next step. Yeah. So this is still in an alpha alpha stages, not even alpha stages. This is still Turkil's bedroom programming during the night stages. Yeah. How many hours? So of course, uh, of course, it's going to uh, have a rollback feature to, a, or else it wouldn't make it in the first place. So um, I made this component while. I, well, I did this component to learn the framework, really. That was why I started doing it, because I worked on earlier versions and I needed to learn the 0.7 version. And uh, well, I just said, yeah, let's try and make a revisable behavior. And uh, so this is what I came up with. I didn't say so much about what the framework is do doing in the back end. Because I think we're going to talk about uh, database behavior. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I think we're going to talk about database behaviors and uh, all the technical stuff tomorrow. So, yeah. Hard question, please. Uh, do I need to ask a hard question? He basically said it all, right? Um, are, we, are we implementing the, that reversion and reverting and all that? Yes, we are, because I'm going to tell him to do that next. I kind of lured him into doing this <laughs> revisions component. Um, what we actually want to do is allow you to revert a whole site to, for example, a revision or allow a, a revert parts of a site to a revision so that you can implement staging functionality where parts of your site are in stage and are being worked on and parts of your site are, are in production. Go ahead. Yes, so this is a Nuku component. Uh, the question was, is this an extension of the Nuku framework? This is a Nuku component which builds upon the framework and creates a reusable extension. Yes. So the, the question, I'll repeat the question and I'll ask it to you, right? Uh, what will happen, Torquil? let's suppose that we install this major impressive boats component that Christian did, but we don't really care about the versioning part, but it, it is versioned, it, it supports versioning. What will happen? Is it going to explode? Well, the same question is uh, what I would have said to Brian when he asked, uh, how many developers, Nuku developers, does it take to change a light bulb? And the answer is uh, zero. The framework does it for you. Well, if you have a component and you have worked with data for five years and you decide, yeah, I want a revisable uh, revisions, of course, I can't reproduce the previous five years of data for you. But once you type in revisable, from there on out, data will be saved. Well, so the question is, are there going to be a million of these things? Well, th we have that problem today already. We have 5,000 of them, and I, I don't see the, 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 the forest bet between the trees. So what we want to do, and then I'm going to kick you out with this foot. What we want to do is build a number of them, a small number of them, and then only support those as core components. Can I, I would just want to fill in here. Uh, what I thought is that revisions is something that should be handled or could be handled on the framework level unless you desperately want to do it yourself. So uh, why not have one functionality that does it all instead of having 5,000 components, whereas 10% of them all implement uh, revisions in the same way? Because it's, it's basically the same thing. Jeremy? So, so uh, it depends. If if I am the developer of boats and I think versioning should be in there, I will just you know have that in the core of my versioning or actually link to that versioning component. But if someone else wrote an extension, maybe cars, and it doesn't have versioning, but I want to add versioning to it, it all it takes is a plugin that adds the versioning behavior to that cars. And yes. But that's, that's, that's packaging, and we, we haven't solved. 
Your question is going to be answered tomorrow during the framework, where you will learn about factory, um, inversion of responsibility, and about uh, command chains, and at the same time about dependency injection. And then you will learn how you can actually inject functionality into another component and mix and match parts together. What you're thinking of right now is what you know, because you know Joomla. Forget what you know and come tomorrow and I'll teach you how it will work. Okay? Yes. I will show it. Uh, by the way, I see that Christian has right stand up. He's the guy who made the, the brilliant example component. Give him. And of course, Turkil, Turkil, the crazy Norwegian. Um, are we done? Do, are we out of time? Well, we have, we have five minutes. Maybe uh, uh, Stephen, are you here? Come up here. So um, this is, uh, Boats is just an example component. It's not something you would use in real life. But uh, this guy is doing serious projects. <laughs> I'll give you the mic. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Steven. I work at a web design and web development company, a small company in Belgium. Um, we do a lot of uh, tailor-made, custom-made uh, projects for our clients. They have certain needs. We need to implement it all. It used to take a lot of time, but now we have the Noku framework, and I will tell you how we are using it. So when I first arrived at the company, uh, actually, Matthias and Johan were working on uh, this, uh, this solution. It's a ship management for the Antwerp port, uh, uh, which contains an enormous amount of data. It exists of uh, a couple of hundred ships. Each ship has a, a number of parts, tens of, of uh, uh, well, tens, 20, 30 parts. And each part has a certain expiration date. It has to be kept in. Uh, we have to remind the captain, the company, when each ship, uh, when each part has to be checked, when there has to be taken oil, oil samples and sent to uh, the lab for validation. Um, how do I uh, get to the next? All right. So this is just a small uh, screenshot showing uh, the data, the kind of data that, is, that, is, uh, that has been implemented into the system. Um, so I, I really don't think I can tell you more about this because it's very specific. But it's all Noku. And what especially uh, uh, impressed me about the framework was I got into the project when it was almost finished. And at that time, uh, only all that was left was uh, fixing small bugs, making minor uh, change, changes to the, to, the, to the layout, to the way the, the data is presented, because the client wanted to. And uh, at, it, at, at, at that time, uh, I had to do nothing more but to read the file names, the code, follow the naming conventions of the framework, and I, it took me two days to get into it to start working on my own, without actually even working in PHP for the, the, the past two years. I've been working with, with Java, and so it took none, none effort, not, uh, no effort whatsoever to, to complete this. Uh, All right. Yeah. Yeah. The next one is uh, also a project that we recently launched. It's a client satisfaction survey, and it also contains a, a massive amount of data, which is currently all presented in Yomla, processed in Yomla, um, and uh, with uh, Noku framework. Um, what happens here is we have one network containing over 400 to 500 companies underneath it. Uh, each company has an unlimited amount of clients. Every time this client passes to one of these companies for, uh, for a service, they get an email sent to them. They get asked, invited to uh, fill in a customer satisfaction survey. This data gets saved, gets processed, and we automatically generate reports and uh, the progress of each company. That's also just a screenshot to show you the, the type of data. All this data is rendered in real time. It took us, yeah, the, the nice graph, I love graphs. <laughs> now, before I want to, uh, before we go further, what you see here is the front end. This is the client of, of the network, one of the, the companies of the network. He can log in with his own user, uh, user uh, name and password, and he gets his results. He can uh, calculate what's, what's happening, what's his progress, what's it all about. Now, the last day of the, <laughs> 
the, the day before we decided to go live, I was having a, a meeting with my client, and uh, <laughs> he asked me. Uh, he said to me, "I want to see all of these results that my my companies can can look. I want to get them also. I, I need them too. This is like uh, an, a massive a massive <laughs> amount of calculations happening." So I was like, no, no, how am I going to fix this? This will take me two weeks to, to get it done. Then I figured I'm using NoCo. <laughs> it's no problem. It took me three lines of code to get the same, uh, the same uh, calculation, the same report back into the, de the, the back end for the administrator to look at. So uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. That's the power of, of NoCo. Everything goes pretty fast. This project, how long would you think it would take you to, to build? I don't know if you have any idea. No, no idea. My, my first calculations, oh, sorry, sorry. Two months, yeah. It took me three weeks to finish it all. And then a couple of, an extra week just for, with, with the meetings and the presentations and, and everything else. So this is Noku for you and uh, I hope you will see, you will find that it can save you a lot of time, a lot of effort, and uh, help you create, satisfy your customer needs. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Steven. Um, so our, our, time is, our time is up, and we need to wrap up here because this room will be used for the J Oscars, which I'm very excited about. Um, we haven't shown one yet, and that's RevBase, but if you're interested in RevBase, which is a, a referential component for uh, academic organizations to store citations to uh, academic work. This is something that uh, Gergo is working on for the inter uh, IIT, the Italian Institute for Technology. If you're interested in seeing that component in action, you can also bother him. And you can bother any of these people that you s saw here and to for a live demonstration of what you saw here in screenshots. If you have more questions about Nuku Framework, you can come to us. We're at uh, the booth out, uh, outside and tomorrow uh, afternoon at 1.30, there is our developer workshop. One more uh, announcement. If you are coming tomorrow to the workshop, uh, we'll be at the stand. Bring your USB stick or your laptop. We'll give you a full Joomla installation with all the example code and the database uh, that you can use to follow or to play with at home. If you don't brought a laptop, no problem. You can follow the presentation without uh, any problem. Yes, that's it. So the workshop is a lot about showing you how it works. And if you bring your code, you can actually also try it out at the same time but we'll also show it all on slides that you can follow to see how it all fits together. I thank you for, your, for being here. I hope it was informative. I see people smiling in the back, <laughs> which is, I still hope is good. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. There's Jay Oscars at seven, and um, I'm curious to see who's gonna win, right? See you guys later today. <laughs>